Hi everyone, Raju here. Good day to all of you. Now to begin with the new chapter in the telecommunication that is with the new video. We have already covered till six videos and the last video what I have covered was on the location update. It was on location update. Okay. Now here in this video we have seen that what all the different network elements that are involved. We have seen, uh, seen that what is win by HLR, what is MSC, what is your uh, MS is nothing but your mobile subscriber and uh, VLR right and how the signaling info happens how the signaling info happens means how the authentication happens between each network element in order to make sure that the subscriber subscriber that is a mobile subscriber is able to latch to network correct now here we had seen now uh, we had also seen some of the definitions of msc ms vlr hlr what exactly it means what data it contains correct now uh, we are moving from the basic to slowly towards to the advanced level of uh, understanding the telecommunication now as we move it is very important for us to remember the abbreviations that are used in telecommunication for example if you say hlr what does it means it means that your home location registry right now why we need to know because this terminology changes as we move on to your 4G and 5G. Okay, so there if you are, uh, are referring the same network elements packed together into a single particular name then we should be able to understand oh, oh now if I am referring this name as X then it means my MSC or HLR or my BTS, BSC whatever it is in my earlier uh, networks of 2G or let's say uh, related to 3G. So that is very important for us to understand. So without uh, further delaying we will deep dive into the abbreviations okay now that i have uh, prepared in order to uh, means remember in a high level uh, thing now terms to remember now if you basically see the architecture of the gsm it mainly comprises of four components and those four core components are nothing but your nss bss ms and oss these are the four network elements if you go to the uh, higher technology also like 4g and uh, 5g these kind of systems are required but they are bundled together as the network uh, or the as technology got advanced now if you see nss what does it mean nss is nothing but your network and switching subsystem bss is your base station subsystem ms is your mobile station mobile station is nothing but your uh, physical handset you can refer oss is operation and support system okay these are the four mainly co components of gsma network which authenticate or which communicate with each other to provide a seamless coverage to the subscriber now if you further deep dive now nss what we are saying network and switching subsystem now network and switching subsystem means in the in the location update we have already seen that what are the network elements that are involved like your msc hlr vlr uh, and further on now here in nss what we mainly see these are the network elements okay and the switching center now msc is nothing but your mobile services switching center hlr is your uh, home location registry vlr is your visitor location registry eir is your equipment identity registry auc is authentication center gms is your gateway msc and smsg is nothing but your sms gateway now here what we will see msc means what it's a switching center mobile switching center we can say instead of saying mobile services switching center mobile switching center also you can say because uh, the main function of the msc is now whenever the call is originated from one sub subscriber to another subscriber okay now let me just again uh, briefly explain that now here if we see that home look uh, msc what it will do now let's say here is your mobile subscriber and here is your mobile subscriber when you are originating a call then the msc under a particular area okay will provide coverage it will gather the data and it will 
transfer the data to the different network elements okay that is all the function of msc will be uh, you can refer to the location update video that how msc authenticates and then you will it will be very clear the same way if you see hlr in the hlr what we are seeing that there are two different databases that are available one is your static database and the other is your dynamic database now dynamic database is what the data which is temporary and keeps on changing as and when the mobile subscriber keeps on changing the uh, services or location or uh, let's say he had uh, opted for some call forwarding call barring and uh, rest of the value added services so those kind of uh, services are not fixed he may use for 10 days he may use for five days and after that he may again go back to some different services so what exactly we are seeing here that the services are changing but if you see the name the msisd and the address right related uh, stuff it is permanent because it cannot keep on changing changing it doesn't change that when subscriber is moving that this data is also getting changed it doesn't happens like that correct so the if we see that static database considers the permanent data and dynamic database of hlr considers the temporary data vlr is nothing but you are like your msc whatever the function of msc uh, are there the same functions are applicable to your vlr only the thing is when why vlr because when you move from one visited location to other visited location so other location whatever the new msc you are latching on that becomes your vlr vlr because it consider it is considered as visitor location registry eir equipment identity registry now this is very important uh, let's say you are having a handset black and white handset let's say nokia handset you are having 3300 or 3100 whatever it is now from that if you try to browse the internet you will never be able to browse the internet why because this eir database uh, database it's basically a database contains the imei number of each and every handset and it allows that what kind of services can be used on that particular handset whether your handset is 4g compatible 2g compatible 3g or 5g that kind of information is also available in your eir registry so whenever you are trying to browse a particular service it will see that whether this services can be done by the handset or not and based on that you will be authenticated to see that okay i will be able to perform this services so that is the importance of your eir auc is nothing but authentication center so whatever the services you are trying to uh, use there will be authentication system right so that authentication is controlled by your auc gmsc is nothing but like your msc but it's a additional uh, thing like a gateway msc whenever uh, basically this comes into picture when there is a roaming that is happening between two different networks then in between uh, it's like a wall where signal passes from one msc to other msc but gateway msc controls it and sms uh, gt is nothing but sms gateway is nothing but your sms when you you are trying to send the sms from uh, one mobile uh, subscriber to other mobile subscriber it goes through a sms server and uh, the further process takes place so this we will see about the sms gateway when we will see the sms call flow that how it happens okay so this is about nss so what i have said that the gsm network consists of basically four main components that is your nss bss ms and oss now we had seen about nss now in nss nss what are the different elements that are involved it has it contains msc hlr vlr eir auc gmsc and smsc so msc is your mobile switching center hlr is your home location registry vlr is your uh, uh, visitor location registry eir is equipment re identity registry auc is authentication center gmsc is your gateway mobile switching center which is also like your msc and smsc gateway is nothing but your uh, gateway for sms okay now these are about nss coming to bss okay now it, here it should not be confused because in telecom there are two main terms that are mainly used as bss and oss bss also refers as business support system but that is different here we are uh, uh, talking from the network side so bss is nothing but your base station subsystem 
okay now base station subsystem mainly comprise of your bsc and this bsc is connected to different bts's okay bts's are small uh, units which you can see uh, placed at different locations so this bsc can handle 50 30 uh, 100 uh, bts based on the capacity of the bsc okay and this bsc is now again connected to your msc so that is how your architecture flows that we will see okay now the third component is your uh, mobile station which is nothing but your physical device which consists of your hardware and software okay because uh, if you have a mobile device in that if the related hardware is not there and to communicate if the specific uh, software is not installed in that hardware then we will not be able to use that right in combination to that it is very important that you have a sim card in your handset you have all those handsets but if you don't have any SIM card, you will not be able to do anything because SIM card is the main uh, element which is basically establishes the connectivity between different networks and it gets authenticated you as a unique subscriber. Okay, so if you see the SIM, SIM is nothing but subscriber identity module. So each device consists of a unique number called as IMEI number. Now here while explaining EIR registry, right, I have mentioned about IMEI because if this IMEI number you can see in your handset also. Now how you can see when you open the handset and if you take out the battery, if your uh, handset is having a battery removable uh, feasibility, then below the battery where it is placed, you can see IMEI and there is a number that is associated. That is unique. One IMEI cannot be associated, cannot be tagged to another uh, handset because already your EIR will have authentication whatever activity you are trying to do it will register everything and if any of the IMEI is blacklisted okay that information will also have EIR uh, database so if you try to do any of the activity from the blacklisted IMEI EIR will not allow the authentication means from that onset you will not be able to do any services usage okay so that is the important of importance of imei so imei is nothing but it is international mobile equipment identity okay and uh, sim contains the imz that we have already discussed and imz is your international mobile subscriber identity and this is also unique and it is unique to uh, specific uh, telco operators so because uh, the imz starts with your mcc and mnc and based on that the mcc and mnc the network defines to which operator you belong and from where you are okay so that is about your mobile station uh, station or it's a physical device oss operations and support system now see here we have discussed about the different network elements right now let's say suddenly all of a sudden there is an increase in the subscriber there is a, a festival that is happening and all of a sudden you see that under particular msc uh, daily the subscribers are visiting were 100 and all of a sudden you see that there are some 20000 subscribers they are uh, visiting that particular area so that msc should be able to handle the loads right so there will be a not system System, there will be a system that is put in place a monitoring system which will identify the load and whenever required they will try to provide a seamless connectivity based on the load by or by balancing the load of that particular network so here what we are trying to derive that in order to have a seamless connectivity and in order to have a seamless communication between the devices because connectivity is not only one important aspect of uh, establishing a signal right this devices this network elements should be able to communicate with each other seamlessly without any issues if any of the problem is happening then the uh, subscribers will not be able to make the usage of their services okay so for that it is a maintenance is required and a monitoring is required that comes under your operations and support subsystem 
okay so this is these are the main uh, high level uh, abbreviations what we have discussed because as we progress now uh, in our next uh, lecture we will discuss about 3g architecture and uh, little bit information about 3g after discussing 3g architecture we will discuss and then we will discuss about uh, 4g architecture and uh, different uh, situations of 4g network elements and then we will deep dive into our 5g okay so slowly we are making a progress towards our 5g uh, network or to our uh, towards our 5g technology for understanding it more so please listen the videos from video one in a sequence way so that it covers a flow in between we have discussed about direct testing we would have discussed this earlier also but see when we know that how the flow is happening correlating the information becomes very very easy so that's the reason why i am covering this now so that once we now start jumping into discussing about the architecture we will be able to discuss very clearly now in this if we really see that what we have discussed okay so let us just uh, draw a diagram now what we have discussed we have talked about nss we have talked about bss we have talked about ms and we have ta talked about operations uh, support subsystem right now if you want to really draw a diagram now how this is happening so here how we can define this now let's say this is my bss this is my bss okay now in uh, the uh, video uh, means in the uh, explanation what we have discussed that bss consists of bts and bsc so it consists of your bsc and bts so what we have discussed also that bsc con contains or uh, has a connectivity between between different bts that are present in a particular location okay let me just uh, write it properly so this bsc is connected to different bts and bsc is again in turn connected to your msc through some channel and then if you see about nsc nss okay here i will write it a little bit bigger because there are more elements now this is your nss right now in nss what we have discussed we have discussed about uh, we will write in authentic uh, means in a uh, uh, structural way first there will be your authentication request right now authentication request goes to your hlr okay from hlr is it is connected to your msc now msc is again connected to your uh, vlr okay means there is a communication that gets established it is connected to your eir okay once everything is done then you will be authenticated to have a successful call scenario okay that uh, as a part of location update what we have discussed you can correlate this with your location update and from there the calls uh, get started uh, successfully okay now here if you see now this has to be maintained and this has to be maintained means there has to be a mechanism for monitoring and uh, supporting the system so for that what you can say that there is oss okay operation support subsystem fine so this is how it is now here if you see this is again connected to your external network because once the successful authentication is done means once everything is fine location update is done then you will start making using uh, calls like you are connected to pstn network you are connected to isdn network uh, you are connected to your uh, uh, gateway uh, means uh, gprs networks right for usage of internet so this is how uh, the connectivity is established between the external network elements apart from what we have discussed here so hope the concept is clear i request you all to please uh, go through the video uh, again and again in order to have a clear understanding and if there is any question or if there is any benefit of doubt to have a further clarity or further explanation please post your comment in the video and please do like and subscribe to my channels to keep to keep getting latest updated videos
थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच